G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Okay guys, well welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well we are in Laguna Beach in Southern California and I am with one of the premier plein air artists, oil artists in the United States, Mr. John Cosby. John, welcome to the show bud. Thank you. This man has had such an interesting past. I mean apart from the fact that he's a really, really well recognised uh, artist in the country, uh, your career actually started off and you can explain it to the audience as a forward man for the presidents of the United States. I was. How did uh, that come about? Well, I was in the military and um, uh, for two weeks, and in basic training they pulled me out and said, you know, you can have a better job than this, and they gave me the opportunity, <laughs> and it was at the White House, so I took it with Nixon. Yeah, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. And you've actually been on Air Force One as well. Yeah, oh yes, many that's, times. That's fantastic, but you've gone on, I mean, you've been a very successful artist over a number of years now. You know, you've started art societies, won art competitions, but somebody said something to you one day, you literally had a whole bunch of paintings sitting around and somebody came up to you and changed your life. Right, right. Well, I did a bunch of work for in and out Burger, which is a local uh, California hamburger uh, establishment and a uh, very popular kind of a cult-like following. And uh, Rich Schneider, who owned the company, came to my studio one day and he saw a bunch of paintings hanging on the wall that were landscapes and he said, well, who paints these? And I said, well, I, I paint them. And he said, can I buy them? And it changed my life. Yeah, like he bought the lot. He bought the lot. He bought 24 paintings that <laughs> That's day. unbelievable. Yeah. He uh, made it possible for me to open my own studio, my own gallery. And the way you went. And that was a huge moment for me. Yeah, it changed your life. Yeah. Well, we're going to actually see this amazing man do what he does today. We're actually up on the hills at the back of Laguna Beach. If you can hear small children crying in the background, it's actually not the goats that are actually clearing all the fields. But we're gonna hike up further up into the hills and then look back down across the Laguna. It's a really, really beautiful area. And look down across the hills here and we're gonna watch John paint an amazing scene. So let's go up into the hills and have a look at this. Okay, pal. Yes. Here we have <laughs> a fantastic view of Laguna Beach. Uh -huh. It's an amazing spot you picked as well. Oh, yes. It it's just superb. So I'm going to let you make a start, and uh, you're going to see an amazing man create an incredible picture. So it's all yours. Okay. Thank you, Graham. When I uh, come to a spot like this, I like to kind of absorb the place for a few minutes before I really start painting the painting, and I've done a little bit of that already, so I kind of know what I want to do here. I'm gonna mix up a few of these values here. My shadow value, family. And is, is that generally the, the, the colors that you use on your whole palette, the ones that you've got there? Yes, I like to uh, keep my palette pretty simple. There was a time that I painted with only three colors for many, many years, and I, I can get every color in the world out of those three colors, except I can't get it quite as pure as I like it sometimes. Uh -huh. So I tend to uh, head off into uh, a more pure color range in a few of the uh, convenience colors, I call them. You came up from a, a painting background originally. I mean, your grandmother was an artist as well. Yes, she was. She was uh, a hobbyist, but a uh, very serious hobbyist. She did ceramics as well as uh, 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 oil painting. And had, she babysat me a lot. And my mother drew. So I had both sides. When I was at home, I drew with my mother. And when I was uh, 
uh, with my grandmother four days a week, I would, three to four days a week, I would uh, paint with her. So I just lost, I didn't ever gain the fear of paint or drawing, which is, I think, a really big part of, uh, of an artist's life is to, uh, my students that I teach, uh, that one of the hardest problems they have is their preconceived ideas of what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, you can just have fun with this and, and go a long ways with it. I have four quadrants of the, of the canvas that I think about when I'm designing. I want to provide an area of interest in one of them. It's the main area of interest and I'm going to use the surf line down here in this area of the painting to make my main statement of transition uh, and, and interest down here. So that's going to be my coastline and I need to get a nice flat horizon that's not too close to the top of the painting. So I'll start that back here. Nothing worse than walking into a show with a painting in a frame and realize that your horizon was crooked. So I've got my big tree shape here, which is dangerously close to the middle of the canvas, but I've got an offset of this tree that's gonna come in and go out of the canvas. And uh, giving myself a little idea here of a few patterns of rooftops to lead me into my focal area. I'm all about uh, pointing at my focal area with every uh, ounce of energy that I can. We get a light here that comes off the ocean and it's why the painters were originally attracted here because the hills come down to the ocean. We get a light that comes right uh, uh, at sunset, it comes right into the hills across the water and makes this honey-colored light. Yeah. Just like the Riviera, it's That'd really quite nice. Yeah, a lot of painters from Chicago and from the East Coast, from Germany, uh, uh, came here, Edgar Payne and William Wendt and all these great, great painters, uh, Roy Rose. And I paint all over the world, uh, don't get me wrong, I, I tr do travel to paint, but I love painting here and I live here, so to be spontaneous and go out and do what I do, I've had to uh, adapt to different things. And one of them uh, is getting access to properties. And uh, I recently, in the last six months, uh, bought a drone with a really nice camera on it and I can get in and get reference shots uh, in places that I normally was not able to get. I fly it all around the coast. I fly, just took it to Hawaii, flew around quite a bit in Hawaii and uh, uh, I just was up in San Inez and flew the canyons up there and up into the mountains. So in other words, you can cover a lot of ground and get a lot of reference material and get ideas. That's and sometimes just look, at, just look at what you're gonna go hike to to see if it's worth going to hike to it. It's, a fan, it's just using technology to its best degree. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's a lot of fun as well. I mean, apart from the fact that you do this as a living, I mean, can you imagine having another job? <laughs> Uh, no, no, yeah, there, like, there yeah, is no other job. <laughs> like a lot of artists, you use m multiple amounts of different brands to get the colours that you need. You actually use Sennelia, uh, Gamblin, uh, Utrecht, which is a, uh, obviously a Dutch paint, and, and Winsor & Newton. I think a lot of artists do do that to get the colours that they want. I tend to go with what colours I need rather than the brand. So what type of brush are you using there at the moment? This is a Filbert from Rosemary. Rosemary and Company out of England. They make some very, very good brushes, don't they? She makes wonderful brushes. Yeah. And uh, I find them to be, uh, they hold up well. Yep. And they uh, hold paint well and they deliver the paint well. So, you know, in a brush, what else could you ask for? Yes. You know, the texture of the paint means a little bit, but the brush means a lot too. And you were telling me before about a, uh, I suppose you could call it an artistic project where you, uh, you've entitled it Bricks, Boulders and Buttresses. And uh, obviously America's gone through various industrial revolutions, I suppose you could say, or changes. And there's a lot of the old buildings that have been torn down now and you guys are out there trying to, to paint them before they, they're, they're fallen. My friend Joe Paquette and I were uh, both showing in the same galleries around the country and we were sitting at dinner one night and we both loved going and painting the old buildings that were in you know, uh, America from, oh gosh, uh, from the 20s, 30s, the Industrial Revolution, the Carnegie uh, type of uh, 
steel mills and the communities that had built up around them. And uh, we dubbed one night four and a half years ago this project that we we're going to do and called it Rust and Roadsides, a trip to the American dream. And we're aiming for the Smithsonian. That's our plan. Wow. As an American document. Basically what we're doing is we're painting America and the, the great gener what the great generation built and what we have lost in the industrial complex along the Rust Belt. So we paint the barber shops and the bars and the old factory buildings and wow. everything to That's do with fantastic. all those. What an amazing project and it just what, what an absolute joy to be able to do that as well. It is. It's wonderful. We have a website, rustinroadsides.com. That is the only way that we've really been releasing anything so far. What above all would be one of your favorite subjects? Well, I definitely like the ocean. Uh, it, it has a, an appeal to me because I was raised on it. Uh, I was a sailor for many years and, you know, it, it's just the kind of subject that really appeals to me. We're just pulling up one now. It's uh, called uh, Afternoon Break, which is a beautiful blue piece. I mean, the, uh, the aquas that you've got in those waves just look quite spectacular. One thing I've noticed, you have a huge population of Australian gum trees and eucalypts, which is surprising, but you've got a couple of pieces that you could almost swear came out of Victoria and Australia. One called Gentle Flow, and there's uh, another one called Morning in the Woods, and if you stepped out at Shepparton in, in Australia, you'd think it was just down the road. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> that's how much it looks like it. Well, uh, eucalyptus have been a big part of my life because I was raised near uh, eucalyptus groves that were windbreaks for our uh, orange, orange groves uh, here in Southern California. So for me, eucalyptus trees are where I built my tree forts and uh, where we hid uh, when we were ditching school and all the fun stuff I did when I was in school. So I tend to... Uh, uh, love them and find them very fun to paint. Yeah. I'm kind of working the whole canvas here all at once. I'm going to put a, a very warm note back on these shadows. And when you say note. Yeah. Yes, notes of color, but really what I'm looking for is the tone. I'm looking for harmonies. I'm looking for compliments. I'm looking for triads. I, you know, all, all of the music metaphors or, or words are very interchangeable with this. You've also had a very adventurous life refurbishing a sleuth. You know, you've, you've led a pretty cool life, let me tell you. <laughs> from, from presidents to sailing yachts. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I left Washington, D.C., uh, I was only at the, in Washington for four years, uh, a little over four years. And it was very, very intense, uh, lie detector type in, intense. You know, they would make us take tests all the time. and. Uh, once I left Washington, I wanted to really get away from life uh, as I had known it and do some adventures. So I, re I actually got a motorcycle with a buddy and we went up to Nova Scotia. Uh, he was my best friend from childhood and it rained on us all the time. We were camping. We were poor and <laughs> camping. So we ended up uh, deciding, well, we should get a boat. We could still travel and we could sleep in it. So we started looking for somebody who would trade us. Yeah. A boat, and we found somebody who traded us an old Nathaniel Harrishoff designed sloop, and uh, it was sitting in a front yard. You could literally go inside the boat and look straight down to the uh, yard that it was sitting in. <laughs> so we spent six months rebuilding it, and we sailed the intercoastal waterway for years. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's why I started painting, because I would sit on the boat, and people would see me drawing their boats. I didn't have anything else to do, I didn't have any way of making a living. We didn't need much money, we owned the boat. I was so into travel that I had no problem with that part of it. And uh, people would come over and say, what are you drawing? And i say, your boat. And they say, well, I'd like to have that. And I'd say, well, I'd like to eat a nice dinner. And pretty soon I realized I could trade my paintings for things. Yeah. And that started me in my art career. It was very, very organic. But I think it's uh, the way that you've led your life is a great example of not being afraid to make the decisions you need to. Um, you know, living life to the fullest, because there is, there is a, an expiration date on all of this. Oh boy, isn't there though? Yeah. Yeah, when, when you live a life of, as an artist, you, you, I think you live a life, a very full life, because uh, the experiences that you have are not predictable from day yeah. to day. And as soon as you start predicting your life specifically, you can be very disappointed. Yes. This is a... In a, an important area to the painting, but also an important area to get the value and color correct. Yeah. 
so that it feels far away, but still holds a rooftop feeling and side of the building feeling. And I got a whole bunch of those buildings that are that color. But you're not so really, the, the idea is you're not trying to paint every building, it's just the impression of. Exactly. I'm looking for, I'm really squinting when I'm doing this. Yeah. And making sure that I'm only finding the most important shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna get the shadows on those buildings now, which is, of course, an even darker value. Now I'm, now I'm knocking in a few of these most important shadows as they come out onto the street and see how it changes the... Uh, yeah, it's right away. Yeah, immediately you start getting the feeling of architecture. You, you shape there, yeah. I think one of the things about being an artist that's important, uh, you know, of years of experience tell you one thing for sure, and that's you can't be afraid to make mistakes because it's fixing those mistakes that really turns you into uh, uh, the artist that you have potential to be. Yes. You just have to paint with no fear, in other words. You know, a lot of your brushwork is, is not done with tiny brushes. It's done with reasonable sized brushes, isn't it? Yeah, I work pretty big yeah. uh, brush-wise, and then I cut back into these shapes. Yep. I, I would rather the, the statement be put down in a bold way. It's more interesting. It looks like it has confidence to it then. So I'm looking for the planes now, the top planes, the way they're lit. Uh, in nuance, though, I don't want anything lit very strongly out that far, because what happens with distance is shadow and light merge. I've seen a lot of artists work over the years, John, but listening to you today, you're an absolute wealth of information. And in saying that, I know that you do uh, plein air workshops as well, uh, which I'm sure uh, there's a lot of people out there would like to come along. I mean, it's been fascinating watching this man work today. So if somebody wants to inquire about that, John, uh, tell us what your website is. It's uh, cosbystudio.com, and I list the workshops I'm going to do for the year on that. I teach four times a year. Yep. And like for instance, this year, I'm actually taking a group uh, in October over to France. I've rented a uh, chateau in, uh, uh, the, near the Pyrenees Mountains in a village called Le Mou. Yeah. My fiance, soon to be wife, uh, is a great lecturer and teacher in nutrition. And uh, we've designed a cooking program so that the spouses of people or the friends of people who are interested in uh, high-end uh, healthy cooking, that's really good. Uh, they're gonna be doing that side of it, so we're teaching cooking and painting. It's just a little different than your standard painting trip. Well, it's a fantastic opportunity. I think anybody that's out there watching Cal in your life, uh, you know, John's one of those guys that has a, has a lifestyle most of us only dream of, but uh, a, brilliant, a brilliant teacher as well. So I would suggest you go in and talk to him. Uh, and that's not just for the people in America either, it's just for people right across the world. Yes, we have a couple coming uh, to that French workshop that is from Belgium and uh, another couple coming from Hawaii. So they come from all over the world. Uh, so this big palm tree here has a stalk that comes down through. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to even push some of this warmth back up into that shadow mm -hmm. to get some air in there and reflected light. Stock to come down. Now I like to kind of decide where I want my stock to begin and where I want it to end so I don't end up making too straight of a stock. Uh, I want to give it just that little bit of lean into the painting but not too much lean. So I tend to plan with my brush. I'll just lay it on there Voila. and bring it right down into the scene. Voila. Okay, see how I'm darkening these tree trunks now back into their value range that I really uh, need them to be to make uh, distance versus close. And I'm trying to vary them. And really an important thing about painting is uh, it's like a body. You're putting it together and the darks are the bones. So they have to all connect with each other. If somebody has broken bones, it shows up right away. Same thing in a painting. Once you get all your darks in, you gotta make sure they all connect to each other in some way or it'll feel broken. I consider a uh, plein air painting to be 90% done in the field. And that last 10% almost always has to be completed in the studio for me. Everybody's different, but um, that allows me to achieve a finish that I'm really looking for in uh, the contemplation of the final few strokes. Sometimes it takes as long to do the last 20 strokes of the painting as it took to do the whole painting, just in careful consideration. Because boy, one thing out of place in a painting and it takes it from being a, a uh, decent painting to being a great painting. 
So I would like as many of my paintings as possible to be as good as they can possibly be. Well, that's why you have one of the best reputations in the country. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty simple. Well, thank you, Graham. It, it, it is a, an artist's responsibility, I believe, to be as good as you can possibly be. And yeah. um, I spent the first half of my career covering up all my deficiencies and the second half embracing them. Like I said earlier, about 90% of the painting is done in the field and the important part for me is to get the light and the shadows and the form and the values all in the right place. And then I take it in and I nuance it, noodle it around in the studio and I'm not gonna have time always in the outdoors to do that. So uh, this painting's about at that point now. So I hope you got something good out of it and uh, are able to use some of this information to make your paintings better or, or improve your eye about a painting. That's fantastic, John, and what a amazingly talented man. And because of the beauty of uh, television and our editing, uh, you can see the, the finished piece in front of you right now, which looks absolutely spectacular. But we've had an absolutely marvelous day with you here in the beautiful Laguna in California. And uh, one of the great master plein air artists of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, a fantastic day with a very, very talented man in a beautiful place, as you can see. Uh, John, thank you so much, buddy. It was an absolute pleasure. This man is one of the masters of plein air art in the United States. And if you would like to do some workshops with John, great idea, and it's a fantastic adventure. I mean, he does some really wonderful things uh, with his beautiful upcoming wife, uh, also going overseas, um, food, and obviously painting. Uh, absolutely come along. And your website is? cosbystudio.com. Fantastic. So you go in there, have a talk to John and go on a great adventure when it comes to painting. Also come and see us at colorandyourlife.com.au. Uh, also come in and subscribe on our YouTube site. Lots of people in there and also our Facebook. Once again, until we meet again guys, remember, make sure you put some color in your life. We'll see you next time. Bye now.